Right, well for some reason Ian's been sat in the back of an ambulance all morning. I don't know why. What are you doing in there, man? Um, well, as a lot of our customers will know who've uh, phoned us up in the last couple of weeks, I've uh, been off work, just for a minor heart issue, just needed some rest. So I thought the best place for me was in the back of an ambulance when I, now I was back doing some emails. You don't want to be in this one. It might get me there slow, but nothing will stop us. And you'll be in worse condition when you get there than when you started. <laughs> Potentially so, yeah. Um, I suppose you're doing a workshop update. I am, we've not done one for a while. That's right. Um, very much the same vehicles as we had last time as well. Um, we've got an MGB GT, we've got a Cobra, and a Defender. Um, it's all the same, but different. Shall sure. we jump to it? Let's have a look at those. Cool. Okay, so yeah, it's the same vehicles, but slightly different. The red MGB GT has changed to a green one. The engine is now ready for installation in here, and uh, exhibit A, here it is. Um, this video is gonna be a little bit choppy um, because of some pre-recording we done before I was away ill. Um, so we've got some videos of this engine being built up, which Steve's gonna splice in and a bit of a, a, a pre-video we did of this vehicle as well. Whilst I've been away, Steve's been doing some great photos of the work that's been going on, which we're going to pop into this video as well. The blue Cobra has changed to a green one. So this has a 3.5 engine as well. It's now getting stage three cylinder heads and 270 camshaft. Also, we're taking out the very old and tired LT77 gearbox and it's getting an R380 put in, in place. And then the green Defender 90 has changed to a blue one and has a TVR badge now. So um, it's a TVR 450, we all know that 4.6 is. It's had the ignition upgrades now fitted and Tornado ECU chip. Actually came in because it's about 90,000 miles. Uh, suspected camshaft where it wasn't noisy or anything but we know TVRs wear camshafts early and that's kind of still a, a mileage where they can wear in any Rover V8 engine if they're not well maintained and looked after. Uh, so uh, yeah, took the camshaft out, definitely showing uh, concave tappets which we've got pictures of. So this has now got the 285 camshaft in, so we'll do some videos of that running up as well, uh, maybe next week, which then might actually be published next year now. But yeah, um, so let's see what fabulous uh, pictures of all the work Steve's been taking. We've got a different MGB in, um, and uh, the customer had already diagnosed an engine fault on here. Uh, it's actually very rare for a 3.5 to slip a liner, but this one has. It's very difficult to see, but it, it's here. Um, so the inlet manifold and the cylinder heads, everything was already stripped off the engine. Uh, we've now removed the engine, and Holly's already building up a 3.5 litre engine for this. So uh, this is sort of for core material. Um, we will be cleaning up and reusing the customer's original inlet manifold and carburetors for an original look and uh, obviously updating the ignition system most likely. Um, so we'll uh, show you a bit of the engine build as that's going on. Uh, also got some engines to show you as well on the stand, some that are almost completed and looking really nice. So let's pop through into the engine building bay and have a look. So yeah, Holly's getting on really well with the engine for the MG, uh, 3.5 litre. Uh, we have standard cylinder heads on here, fully manufactured, so new valves, new guides, new seals, new springs. Um, we're on composite head gaskets, camshaft in here is, I need to look it up, uh, Piper Torque Max uh, on a 3.5, so lots of bottom end grunt, obviously with standard cylinder heads that's going to work really, really nicely. Uh, other engines that we've got going on in here, this is a 4.6 bottom end that's now being built up for a P38 autobiography that we will have for sale here very soon once the engine's in and I've done a few miles on it to make sure I'm happy with everything as normal. This engine is 4.6 stage 3, I think we might have shown it in the last workshop update. Obviously now fully dressed, this is going over to Mauritius for a Defender 90, complete with our Edelbrock 500 CFM carburetor set up there and the RPI ignition kit. So uh, yeah, the customer's looking forward to getting that in there. And then finally in here today, we've got a 
3.5 engine. We did show this on our workshop update videos. Uh, this was being removed from a chassis that was brought to us with the gearbox as well for a two-door classic Range Rover build that's happening for one of our customers. Uh, we're doing the engine and gearbox, so hence why we're sticking with the original SU carburetors and we're now actually doing the rebuild on them. So I think that completes in the en uh, engine bay at the moment. Uh, we'll uh, go into the workshop at some stage and record something else for this bit of the workshop update. Okay, so the MG. Uh, the engine isn't going in quite yet. Uh, we've picked up on some welding just in the engine bay that uh, needed doing before the engine went in. Uh, the customer's done a lot of the welding work on this car to keep it on the road over the years. Um, however, this area uh, we're going to take care of for him now whilst the engine's out because he can't actually access that area with the engine in. So we've uh, just been discussing that and Holly's been working his magic in there, ready so we can get the engine in, which will probably be next year now, because obviously we've got this Christmas New Year bit in the middle. Um, so it's going well, engine will be in and running beginning of uh, January. Over to the Cobra then. So um, Steve's got a couple of photos, this is the engine back in. Uh, over the top of this now Steve should be splicing a video of how the engine did look. Obviously, you can now see we spent a lot of time and detail just on the rocker covers in the plenum chamber, just to give it a really nice look there. Um, I think we've got a picture of the engine coming out and a picture of the engine going in. As previously stated, this has changed from the LT77 to the R380 gearbox. Uh, not many differences in the gearboxes there, we've just got to create a new rear mount for the gearbox. Uh, other than that, this is done. Um, so again, road testing on this will be beginning of next year. Sounds a long way off, but actually we've only got a couple of days left this year of work. Um, so yeah, uh, both these two green vehicles, the MG and the Cobra, we'll be doing a video of road testing on, uh, that should be our first workshop update, I reckon, next year, Steve. Sounds good. On to the TVR. Can we test that one now? I reckon so. Okay, so the TVR, Steve's just said, yeah, it's ready for road tests, so we'll uh, go up the road in this in a, in a minute. Um, so, uh, yeah, as I said previously, it came in, it's got about 90,000 miles on the clock. Uh, we know mobile one oil is generally used in TVRs, which is far too skinny for these engines, causes premature cam wear. This has actually been maintained incredibly well, religious oil changes, and it did switch over to 2050 at some stage in its life. So actually the camshaft uh, was in really good condition for a TVR at 90,000 miles. Um, Steve will actually now splice over a little bit of video of us uh, showing the concaveness and the, um, where the surface has actually started to wear off on the tap it's though, um, with some dodgy finger pointing in it, so you can see that. So that should now be going over the top of this video. Um, you can see where that wear had started. Ideal time to replace this camshaft, uh, because it means any swarf material that had started to get around the engine has now been flushed and washed out, and we've removed what was now the cause of that um, swarf that could potentially go around the engine. So we've got fresh Piper 285 camshaft in there, brand new timing chain set, uh, OEM lifters, uh, tapper preload has been set, and then uh, the RPI ignition kit, so the amplifier, magnet core plug leads. Customer already had a relatively brand new Bosch coil, no need to replace it, it's new, it's Bosch, it's the right one. Uh, the correct non-resistive spark plugs are in there, with our cap and rotor set up, and obviously the Tornado ECU chip as well. Car drives really smoothly. Um, there's a little bit of a, a knock on the back end, which we we're discussing with the customer. We think is the, the diff itself, um, but actually one of the nicest TVRs I've been out in for a long time. And uh, yeah, hopefully the road test we can uh, demonstrate some of that to you that we've demonstrated hundreds of times before. So uh, let's go for a road test, Steve. Sounds good. Engine's doing exactly what it should be, throttle response throughout the entire rev range. Bags of torque down the bottom end, obviously being a, a 4.6. Sorry, TVR owners, a 450. And um, un unfortunately, we're not going to show you the first through to fifth gear because this does have a little bit of a knock on the rear end, which um, really sort of uh, destroys the pleasures of that test. Um, we will show you fifth gear down the bottom end of the rev range, though. And uh, yeah, so we're just getting uh, some more miles on the, the engine with uh, the work we've done. Uh, some more bed-in miles. Uh, we're up to 
about 20 miles so far. And um, yeah, the uh, just checking the car uh, is doing what it should be doing. Just done some city driving. Uh, had a supply I needed to pick up some uh, little bits from. So uh, some city driving on road test. Uh, it's great because, uh, as you know, TVRs renowned for shunting, so uh, we're better to test for that than in the city. And everything was fine there. So again, I mean, you can leave this in fifth gear all day long. Since coming off the roundabout back there, I was up into fifth by, you know, pretty quick, and uh, haven't come out of it yet. Um, just keeping with average traffic on a average A road in Norfolk. Um, to say. There is one thing about TVRs then. Go on then. If there's ever a fire. Oh yes, yeah. The, I'm no, getting I'm, out first. This is the no I'm getting out first knob. Just have to pay a like slapsies before you can get out. Yeah, that's it. Any any event of emergency, mate, I'm out first. Yeah, but We've done these so many times, the results are, are always the same. A real pleasure to drive. 285 camshaft does, you know, it's not a radical camshaft, it doesn't destroy bottom end torque like a lot of radical cams do. It's um, what we use for all of our stage three engines. It delivers really nice power throughout the entire rev range. Yeah. A very nice place to be. You like TVRs, don't you? I do like TVRs. I don't like them as a passenger though. I don't know who that was driving the other way, but she flashed her lights and waved. First time you've been flashed while you're driving a TVR? Mm, probably not. <laughs> that sun's annoying. Yeah, can you turn it off? I can email someone, there's probably somebody I can complain to about it. say no to sun. Right, so uh, just before we get back to the workshop, just uh, demonstrate some of the slow running. So we're at 20 miles an hour there, I'll just pop it in the fourth. And uh, you've just lent on the button that locks us in, Steve. Yep, all good. So everything's nice and smooth there. 25 miles an hour, we'll drop into fifth. Again, everything's nice and smooth. I can accelerate, pull it up to 30 miles an hour. As I say though, the rear diff is just struggling with that a little bit. Pull it back down into fourth at 30. But it's driving smooth, it's not shunting, it's quite happy at this speed in fourth. There's no TVR silliness here. 